welcome to another edition of the eSpot with Camille. The eSpot is your location for the latest in entertainment, beauty, and design from the people who make it. Thanks for joining. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the eSpot with Camille. I am your host, Camille Cower, and I am very excited for you to meet the one, the only, Sir Frank Cooper, who is the director of the African American Humor Awards. And he's going to share more about how important it is that we start these conversations now before the awards show in October of 2024. So let me go ahead and bring him on onto the stage, uh, introducing the one, the only, Sir Frank Cooper. Hello, hello, Camille. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. I am so excited to have you here today and just to really have this important conversation about not only comedy, but the history of comedy and the importance of it. Uh, so tell a little bit about how you got started with the African American Humor Awards Society. I'm dyslexic, so like a lot of words together with A's. It's like, oh, uh, make sure I say it in the right order. So I keep having to check my cheat sheet. So bear with me on that one. Well, the acronym for it is called the AHAs, and it stands for the African American Humor Awards Society. Even better. So you can just shorten it up by saying the AHAs. Love it. So the AHAs. How did you get started with it? Well, um, I got started in L.A. in about 1988, 1989, and I was... Uh, working with a young man that had started the first black comedy club in LA called the Comedy Act Theater. And uh, I worked with him for a while and I saw that there were no really uh, outlets for black comedians to come and exercise their talent. So Michael started this and I helped him. And as time went on, the club became extremely popular. This is when uh, people like Martin Lawrence, people like D.L. Hughley, people like Robert Townsend, people like Jamie Foxx, all these people were just getting started in comedy. So I got a chance to hobnob with some of those unknown back then who is also well known now. Right. And uh, well, after me and Michael went our separate ways, I kept running into actors and actresses that had been on sitcoms for years. And all of them had the same complaint and that was, no award show had ever honored us for what we've done for as TV is concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, shows like The Jeffersons, mm -hmm. shows like 227, shows like Julia. Now, I might be going way past. Oh, no, I love me some Diane Carroll. Julia okay, was one right, of my okay, favorite well, sitcoms. Then, then, okay. I, I was her stand in for when she did the film um, tell, um, Having Our Say. So I. Okay. I love me some Diana. And believe it or not, I can see that. I can see that. I can. <laughs> Thank you. I can see I that. Yes, it. there is some semblance of you and Diane Carroll. Sure is. And uh, so those shows mm -hmm. never got recognized for anything. None mm -hmm. of the uh, stand-up comedians never was recognized. So I got tired of hearing those complaints, and I said, okay, okay, something needs to be done. Now, I meditate a lot. I go into a closet, and I meditate sometimes 12 hours just thinking to myself, pulling things together. And while meditating, it came to me to create an award show for minority comedians. So I tossed it around my head and came up with uh, the name, me and another friend of mine, a lady that's still with me today. Her name is Trisha Voorhees. We were tossing names around. And at first we came up with the Afro-American Humor Awards and that didn't quite sound right because the Afro was the hairstyle. <laughs> so we, um, so uh, she said, what about calling it the African-American Hume Awards? And I said, okay, that sounds like a winner. So she wrote it out. And when she did, we looked at the beginning of each word and it spelled the word aha. <laughs> so I said, that's what we'll call it. We'll call it the ahas. And she said, okay. So we got that down and uh, I started working on pulling it together and I shopped it around and I did the idea around in LA for about a good, for about a good year and maybe year and a half. And of course, everybody says, oh, it's a great idea, but we don't think nobody would watch that. Oh, we don't want to be bothered. Oh, whatever. They all had excuses. And mm -hmm. my father always taught me, if you want to do something, if you can't get somebody to help you do it, then you do it yourself. So I started mm -hmm. putting monies together, raking leaves, cleaning toilets, um, cutting grass, and everything else that I could do to raise monies to pull this together. And a year and a half later, I had enough money to where is that we produced, directed, and sponsored 
the first award show in 1990 in Los Angeles, California, huh. and was accommodated by the first black mayor of Los Angeles. You can see that signature. Wow. Around. Yeah. Okay. He also gave us a day in honor of that on that particular day. And we did it at the Patriotic Hall in LA. And mm. it was an unbelievable award show because all these old stars, Skillet and Leroy, Lawanda Page, Flip Wilson, all these people came to receive their awards. And it was a, it was a celebration of laughter, tears, admiration, and just adulation. It was just absolutely fantastic. The ones that did show up to get their awards. Now, at that particular time on that first show, to give you an example of some of the people that we honored at the time, 1990, there were two rising young black stars rising. Mm -hmm. And at that particular guess. time, we said, okay, we got to honor the future of comedy. So we said, we are going to honor these two hot rising stars. One of them's name is Eddie Murphy. Yeah. Eddie Murphy never sent anybody, anybody to pick up his award. Now, Eddie got three awards that night, and Paul Mooney accepted two of them. And he didn't accept the third one because I guess he just didn't want to accept it. But anyway, the third one, I still have it right here. 30 years ago, if you can see that name, Eddie Murphy, 1990. Okay. Wow. Uh, he was a young, hot, up and coming comedian. And we knew he was going to be special. We knew that. That's mm -hmm. why he got the young, hot, up and coming comedian. The other young person at the time that was coming up who was hot, young, and up and coming, and she never sent anyone to pick up her trophy, her award that night, and I still have it. And that person's name is right there, Whoopi Goldberg. Oh, wow. Okay. Now, I still have these trophies because out of all these 30 years, I've tried to get in touch with these people to give them their trophies from so many years ago. Yeah. Sort of like a prediction of what we predicted that they would go on to accomplish in the future. Right. Now look at who they are now. Mm. So um, that's why we. That's why I established that particular award and the award show, and that was to preserve our legacy, to pay tribute to the ones who had paved the way, and give honor and recognition to all those black comedians, actors, and actresses in the comedic field. They're just due. Wow. Well, you know, you mentioned who didn't show, but I want to talk about the ones that did show because Paul Muni, my gosh, <laughs> he has been involved with so many people. He has done so many things and he's one of my comedic heroes. I'm sure he is of many others. So can you like talk a little bit more about what that was like having Paul Mooney there, even a little bit about what he like, what it meant having him there because he's worked with everyone from Red Fox to Eddie Murphy to Dave Chappelle to all, all the great in between. Paul Mooney received four trophies that night. Mm. One As for writing for all those people you just named. <laughs> One for stand up comic. Mm. One for actor mm. and one for uh, producing, I think. Okay. Uh, Paul came up and of course, his trophies didn't come as quick as he wanted them to. So of course he <laughs> made a joke and his joke was, you know, why is it that I haven't won an award yet? Cause he was, he accepted for Richard Pryor cause Richard wasn't there. And he accepted, like I say, for Eddie Murphy. But Paul said, why is it that you, Negroes have not honored me. I said, well, Paul, yours is coming up, you know, because he was kind of getting hot. <laughs> yeah. and, and he said, y'all must be afraid of me as white folk are. Now, <laughs> that night, Dick Gregory <gasps> received an award yeah. for being a conscious comedy stand-up comic because Dick, a lot of people don't know this, but Dick is really the one that popularized politics and comedy together so he could hit someone with a harsh statement about politics, but he put comedy behind it to make it digestible. And that's how Dick was able to do his thing. 
um, Skillet and Leroy had used to appear on the Red Fox show. They were there. They came up in tears. Marla Gibbs. Wait, wait, wait. You got to back up. You're talking about Dick Gregory. The great yes. late Dick Gregory. We're going to have to take a minute there because I grew up having smoothies almost every day because of the Bahamian diet because my dad became a pescatarian because okay. of Dick Gregory and his conversations about taking care of your body, your body Absolutely. being a temple, like to the point of what you put into it is important and how he even brought up the like the politicalness of how Absolutely. we don't have the um the, the, uh, like the, the organic fruit so easily available right. to us, but we Absolutely. do have the mac and cheese and the cigarettes Absolutely. and the forties and so on. So when you had Dick Gregory there, like what yes. what great knowledge did he drop? Like you can't just say somebody's name like Dick. I mean, I want to get to Marla Gibbs too because man, I've heard her name. Like almost every actor in LA has taken Marla Gibbs acting classes. If if they've gotten the joy of being able to. Absolutely. So let's go back a little bit though. You can't just, okay. you can't just jump over. Can't just um, drop. Okay. You, you can't drop a name like that and expect me not to stop and pick it up. All <laughs> right. So Share a little bit about Dick Gregory. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Dick Gregory. Oh, I've, I've got, I've got some names for you. <laughs> Dick Gregory. Name drop them. When he, <laughs> when he showed up, he said, I cannot believe that someone had come up with the idea to pay tribute and homage to all these people. Because um, you had Skillet and Leroy there. Like I say, Marla Gibbs. Mm -hmm. There was a, um, uh, you had Lawanda Page. All these legendary comedians and comedians. There is even some, I wish I had the list, if I'd have been thinking I'd just put the list down here so I could- You can send it to me later, that's but fine. Anyway, <laughs> what, uh, what Dick did, he said, I can't believe that it took us this long for someone to come up with this idea and to pay tribute to us because white folk really could care less about us. They want to make money off of us. But when it comes time for us to be honored on their shows, which these shows that we're talking about, 227 and, and Julia, these shows was in the top 10, 20 shows every week on TV. Sanford and Son, every yeah. week on TV. All right. So he said, I want to thank you. And I, and, as a matter of fact, it's on film. People can actually go online and look at him thanking me for what we did. Yeah. So he was just absolutely fantastic. The lady, this is a name that I'm sure you've heard of. The lady that was the host of the show that night was the first Carly B. When it came to music and I'm not going to say raunchiness, but it came to just out there. Yeah. And that lady's name is Millie Jackson. Oh, wow. Have you ever heard of Millie Jackson? I have. I'm trying to think of her work on the top of my head, but I'm... Rhythm, rhythm and Blues. Okay. Absolutely fantastic. I mean, fantastic performer. Mm. Okay. Along with Chris Thomas of Rap City was one of our presenters, and he was a recipient as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, Marla Gibbs, come on. And she's literally in tears. Now, a lot of people were in tears, including some of the men. Um, Molly Gibbs came up to give her a speech, and she was like, it's just an honor to be here and to know that somebody Black created this for us. And she was saying, I really want to thank you for what you've done. Some of that is on film. Now, I had that show back then filmed with a four-camera crew, but I ran out of money. And I didn't have enough money to finish paying the production company. And they kept all that original footage, but they gave me little excerpts from that particular show. And those are the excerpts that you see on our website. Oh, wow. So we need to work on getting the, the rest of that footage, the archive footage for you, too. You got I'm going to be honest wow. with you. I really, I have forgotten. I've tried to find what was the mm. name of the production company was over the years I've tried looking and I can't, yeah. I, I can't find no paperwork on it, no nothing. Cause most of the time back then I was Everything dealing mostly paper. with cash, mm -hmm. you know, mm. when you pay somebody with cash, of course, you know, the receipts, there's no receipts, but anyway, but we had a tape, but anyway, we do have vintage footage footage from that original show. <sighs> That's better than um, nothing. Yeah. The wonder page <sighs> that worked with red Fox. Yeah as Aunt Esther, she came up in tears. I mean, literally crying, thanking mm -hmm. us 
of what we had created and what we had done. Going back to Paul Mooney, uh, of course, you know, Paul got to make a joke out of everything. Right. And he was, uh, Paul said something to the effect of, uh, you know, it took this long for all these Negroes to be recognized <laughs> and everybody's coming up in tears and uh, we want to keep this thing going. But I guarantee you, Monday morning, these Negroes going to be have forgotten about who you are. And no kidding, it turned out that way, unfortunately. But I kept the awards and the name of the AHAs going because I kept doing things in the AHA names, like we created the first award show or tribute show to Black Fathers, mm. in which we honored some major names, Muhammad Ali, for one, as an example for black men. Another one, believe it or not, we were the first organization to give Steve Harvey his first award of any kind at one of our Father's Day tributes. And he <sighs> plays it on film on our website. And we gave it to him for the very first TV show he did, and it was called Me and the Boys. It was cool. about him being a single father yeah. living in New Orleans trying to raise three young black men. And it was such a positive image for black men that yeah. we gave him a Father's Day tribute award. That's amazing. I I didn't even know that show existed. So now yes. I have to look through to find that. So... Going back and just hearing about all the different comedians and so on that you've worked with and looking forward to what's going on now, what has been the biggest changes and what has been even, because we were kind of talking about this off camera, so I'm basically just trying to do a soft pitch to talk about what's the big changes you've noticed in comedy and what is what are you hoping to honor in 2024? Okay, what we're doing in 2020, well, let me go back a bit to give you a little retrospective of what we have created and what and why it was done. To preserve our legacy, I have to take you back a little. Arsenio Hall, we honored Arsenio Hall for having the hottest night talk show on TV. We honored mm -hmm. this man. In Living Color, we honored Keenan Ivory Wayans for creating, once again, another phenomenon for TV. And yeah. I want you to know that all these networks used these shows to gain popularity for themselves so they could go and later on be sold off to something else. But it's if it like wasn't AI, what these, they're trying to do now with AI in a way where absolutely. instead absolutely. of paying their artists for what they're creating, they're piggybacking off their work to just keep it going. And oh, I mean, and, and it sucks so much because it's usually. Like you said, like we were the ones that made the, I don't even know how to talk about Fox this without getting in trouble with SAG or WGA, but you know, it was like so many times we'd lay down the blueprint of what is the most Absolutely. popular, what's the shows, what Absolutely. sitcoms work with, and we don't even need a, a, a laugh track on our shows, right? So Thank you. <laughs> it's TV. like wondering why, why they're not getting the same awards, they're the same amount of money hint, hint, that the black shows should be getting are going to other shows. So, yeah, I'm glad you're talking about Think this. About I just wanted to bring Think that about up how this is the same problem. Like, if you don't know your history, you're Fox, doomed to repeat it. Fox TV would not be Fox TV if it wasn't for the Arsenio Hall show. Mm -hmm. You remember a TV entity called the WB channel? Yes. Just about all the shows on that channel helped make WB able to sell themselves to i think they sold to viacom or somebody right it was upn and they the went to wb spot. and it was like upn was all the black shows all of a sudden UPN, then it came absolutely the white brothers network and then it became, <laughs> the cw or i think the, I, I, i'm the not CW? exactly sure how it's changed but it's interesting how like even a couple of years ago there's um this wonderful show, The Underground, I think it was called Underground, but it was about slavery. And um, it was one of the slave shows I actually enjoyed watching because you would see sometimes that we revolted. Well, it was bought out by a conservative channel and there went the show. So it's just like, ah, oh, you get so, like we, and then 
we the are Black creators. Network is not really owned by us. So a lot of times the best quality, great stuff isn't on there. So we are creators. And you're just Dave giving me more time. That's okay. That's the joy of being independent. Who's going to fire me? You? Dave Chappelle took yeah. comedy to another level, just like Rudy Ray Moore took comedy to another level. Red Fox took comedy to another level. Then mm -hmm. came uh, Richard Pryor, another level. Then came Eddie Murphy. And here we are now with Dave Chappelle and another young guy named Kevin Hart. Mm -hmm. All these have been transitions upping the level of comedy to a different level by who? By black people. Mm -hmm. But you see, we, for some reason, we can't seem to realize what jewels we are to society. Mm -hmm. Nothing yeah. becomes popular until it is adopted by black people. Then right. it goes all over the world. Hip hop, they're celebrating 50 years of hip hop. Think about it, all over the world. You got Koreans, people that don't even look like us. Rapping. And it's really amazing. And I love it, you know, that it has because it used to be something like, oh, this isn't commercial that we can't have this on air. We'll put Absolutely. this on after midnight. We'll Absolutely. just have Yo MTV raps or raps, Absolutely. you know, just an hour of it, not too much Absolutely. of it. And Absolutely. and now it's everywhere. Like there's not a single Absolutely. pop star who hasn't had a rapper as a feature or was featured on a rapper. Like even Selena Gomez, her highest record as of to date is with well it's not necessarily rap but it's with afro beats it's still that combination of us joining forces instead of being separate Absolutely. and not equal you know because we're not getting those equal paychecks regardless of no the strikes, see, the <laughs> or no is, strikes. yeah we have all this creativity mm -hmm. but we can't seem to find it within ourselves to realize how much goal within ourselves that we have so mm -hmm. we won't invest in ourselves. I've been carrying this thing for 30 years plus. 2021, mm -hmm. we had our 30th anniversary AHA award show here in Vegas. Mm -hmm. We honored for the first time non-minority comedian. And that comedian's name is Jay Leno. <laughs> because Jay Leno used the Tonight Show to further the careers of so many black comedians coming up by having them on his show. Yeah. Along with, we honor George Wallace with a Lifetime Achievement Award. Mm -hmm. And I cannot, I cannot talk about this without bringing up the Rosie Parks of comedy. And that means comedy for men as well as women. Yeah. The Rosie Parks of comedy is a lady named Monique who took uh, on the giant and slayed it. A couple of times. Right? And never walked away from the integrity of what she stood for. Mm -hmm. You see, young people, they don't see that. They don't understand that. Because I remember when everybody was dogging Monique for not taking the 500000 that was offered and said, oh, she needs to just take the money and shut up. Well, she, like she said, we've been doing that for years. Right. People have been eating off of our creativity for years and never paying us our worth. But Monique took a stand. Monique is the Rosa Parks of comedy. Yeah. Because now and she's opened the doors for just about everybody, men, women, yeah. white, black, you name it. And she Think made a point it. of it being known that just because you love something, you shouldn't be exploited for it. You should be paid for it. They she shouldn't comes. just automatically assume since they gave you this job that you're going to use your own money to go fly and promote this film. So it does like it's it's amazing. Much like your awards show, I'm self funded for the most part as well. And it's the same thing. Like I'm not in order to get paid from someone else, they want me to jump through hoops that I don't want to jump through. I want to be able to have everyone I want to have. I don't want to have to stick Absolutely. to just men, women, black, purple, Absolutely. you know. I want to be able to have on who I want to have on that Absolutely. is inspiring for others to, as well because the whole idea of my show is I want people to watch the show and be inspired to pursue whatever their dreams may be, whether it's starting Absolutely. their own awards show or becoming a comedian or becoming an actor, whatever Absolutely. it may be that usually people are like, uh, maybe you should get another job first or maybe you should have a backup. Sometimes when it comes to this kind of career, there is no backup. It will there eat at no you until you finally do it. So you just got to go Absolutely. all in. Absolutely. So 
with Monique, like what were some of the jewels she dropped as well? Because I do think that you probably know some lines from some of the different people that you've had that really just would inspire people to go for it, to keep your integrity and not say it out. I talk to her her husband at Mm -hmm. least once every two months. We'll talk. (laughs) And I will tell you, I admire her for her integrity, for taking a stance Mm -hmm. and for calling the brothers and sisters out who sell out. Now, one of the biggest obstacles that I run into trying to get people to to sponsor us or trying to get people Mm -hmm. to get us on TV is whenever I talk to some white executive about it, the first thing they say is, oh my God, it's a great idea. You've been doing this for 30 years. Why is it that no one has come along and sponsored you? And I'm saying, well, I'm asking the same question. Yeah. You know, because I know it's a fantastic idea and there is history behind it. So is there's a lot of stuff, substance behind it, but we're still struggling and we're going to struggle. We're going to struggle. And I, I'm used to struggling because most black people are that part. just like you said, when you have a passion for something, it's not about money. It's mm-hmm. about preserving our history. Once again, that full circle and our legacy of our contributions that we've made to this society here in America and has been ignored for years. And we're not going down like that. We're going no. down. Fighting. And I think now like so many other people who have started their own podcast or t- videos or whatever, we're not restricted to just re- like begging for ABC or BBC or Absolutely. PBC. You know, we don't need them anymore. Absolutely. Even Absolutely. now, people have cut. I mean, even I cut my cord because I'm like, I've had enough. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I, I get it. You don't care about my viewership, so why am I paying for this? Absolutely. So I'm curious for you, like with being independent and being able to keep that integrity, is it something that you're thinking that you're going to keep independent, or do you want to? Well, not. I mean, I don't think it's a sellout to be on a larger no. stage because that just gets more people involved right, in what you're right. doing. But what would be your dream with that? Like, how would you like for that to be, I guess? To be honest with you, I, I want I want our awards show to be on the same level as the Grammys or the Emmys. Mm-hmm. Because this is something I really want you to pay attention to. And I hope your listeners are listening to it and pay attention to this too. Usually when you see a Black actor that has won a Golden Globe, or a Grammy or an Emmy. When you see them being interviewed, even though they may have been granted a BET award, an NAACP award, they never talk about being an NAACP award recipient. I was a Soul Train award recipient. recipient. They never talk about that. First thing they say, I'm a Grammy winner. Mm. I'm a People's Choice winner. I'm an Oscar. They always, they never think about the people that supported them. Because if it wasn't for black people paying attention to what they were doing, they never would have gotten popular enough to where is the white folk would have honored them or recognized them. But they never give those props up when they go on talk shows and TV shows to talk about their accomplishments. They always leave out the BET Awards, the NAACP Awards, the Soul Train Awards. They always leave it out. But they go straight, I got a Grammy. I got an Emmy. Got mm. people's choice. And you know, wow. I mean, there's some, like, I feel like in the hip hop community are like, who cares about those things? Billboards, top 50 list or the other list, you know, or even getting a Grammy or Oscar. Cause it's like, they don't pay their bills. They, that's not I, like getting an awards show from a show that doesn't actually listen to their music. It doesn't make a difference for them. Thank um, you. Thank you. That's very and, true. And I want see you've been in the business, you know, you know, you know, but um, I was, my father won a Directors Guild Awards. He won a Lifetime Achievement Award. And it was one of those things where it was just like it was such a big deal. And he invited all of his family members and all of his like closest colleagues because he's mainly done. He hasn't done a lot of mainstream films. He's mainly mm-hmm. done black films like New Jack City, Friday, Players Club, <laughs> Girls Trip, things of that nature. And so when he got that award, it was like to get that from his entire peers, it meant a lot to him because he hadn't gotten anything from the BET Awards or NAAC image. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's just, he's not as a fancy title as a director, Absolutely. but he's a union production manager. So, you know, there's that. But it was one of those things that when 
we were there, it was interesting to see the dynamics where we're, our table was all black. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it was, we were having the most fun too, because absolutely uh, South Philly don't play, right? So <laughs> my uncles, they were screaming out for the Eagles. It was, it was, it was a fun time. But then looking out, I saw Stan Lathan there. Um, and he was like, I should have sat at y'all's table. <laughs> And, you know, there was like a lot of people there and it was just interesting to see the dynamics of like when you're thinking of Hollywood from the outside, you think of it as being so, um, I, I guess, segregated in a way because it is mm-hmm. like black movies or white movies. Oh, if you're in a black film, then you're probably never in white films and they mm-hmm. call white films mainstream, but black mm-hmm. films are separated instead of realizing that it's a human experience regardless sure. of side of the lens it's done and for us to really put up on the same level like you said NAACP Grammys Oscar they need to be respected at the same level because it the point is we're not getting that from the Grammys from the Oscars because there's not like they were talking about how um sometimes even like they've opened up the academy to include more people of color but there was at a point even the Golden Globes like there was none apparently black people (laughs) So how could they <laughs> nominate us or look at our art and be able to look at it in a critical way to understand it? Because, you know, you have to know those nuances. You have to know our vernacular. You have to all have grown up in a black home with a wood Absolutely. and spoon on the wall to recognize that's great set decoration. You know what I mean? <laughs> that Absolutely. We would Absolutely. never put our shoes on our couches. You know, there's those things that we notice in our black films and we definitely would not cuss at our children or our parents. Children would never cuss at their parents unless they were ready to get hit um, when we could hit kids. But, you know, <laughs> those are the different things that, you know, they don't always recognize in our films. And so it it kind of falls on the wayside. Or, And I, when I was on the Screen Actors Guild, I was on the nominating committee one year and I made a point of being very considerate of the fact like, wow, in every category, I can vote for somebody that's a person of color. And most cases Absolutely. have to choose between more than one black person on um, some of them. And it, it was I was proud of that. So, but you see, I see we that as we as yeah. black people, we are. Everybody is a person. All human mm-hmm. beings are the same, and we are. But there is something different about us, and it's called rhythm. It's called rhythm. Everything that black people do, we do it with rhythm. That is what sets us apart. You can take, for example. The young lady that uh, was up for an Oscar this past year, that was up for an Oscar this past year. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of her name. I see she played uh, Tina Turner. Talk to me. Oh, Angela Bassett. Angela Bassett. (laughs) I was thinking the Broadway. How can you take Mm -hmm. talent like that? When I looked at her playing Tina Turner, I'm telling you, I thought I was looking at the real Tina Turner, okay? And, and it when was like I saw her playing the queen of yeah. Rwanda, I thought I was looking at the real queen, okay? Yeah. Yep. That's a different kind of flavor, but she was ignored. Mm-hmm. And some of us even criticized her for not being overjoyed for Jamie Lee Curtis getting that award. Because we, we know what year, we but yeah. was doing. Yep. Jamie Foxx, one of the best all-around actors you can think of. Him, Denzel Washington, they're on the same level as a Sidney Poitier, on the same level as a Harry Belafonte, okay? And when these men are representing us, we should jump up and shout if they win on white shows or black shows. And when they do get their award or get an interview to talk about their past and what they've accomplished, the first words out of their mouth should be what they were awarded by by black people because we gave them that popularity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But they just don't do that. And, mm-hmm. and, and that's why the ahas are so important because This year in 2024, we're opening it up for everybody, Mm -hmm. everybody. But there will be more black recipients. We're going to do them like they do us. You know, (laughs) we want white people to be honored and we want Asians to be honored. We want Hispanics to be honored. We want everybody to be honored and they will be. But the majority of the recipients are going to be people who have been ignored throughout the years of the accomplishments that they made. And that's black people. 
Because back in the day, that first award show, we honored Paul Rodriguez, a Hispanic comedian. Mm -hmm. We honored a guy that had the first, the first Hispanic primetime TV show, and that was a man named Freddie Prince. Do you remember Freddie Prince, Chico and the Man? Yeah, of course. Well, I know, I remember his son. Okay, all right. <laughs> Same thing. But we honored Freddie Prince yeah. back then. Okay, mm. so we were already talking about recognizing these minority comedians for what they had contributed. And in 2024, this is what we have planned. I don't, I hope they'll accept because we, we do kind of catch a little devil trying to get these people to accept us giving them an award. Mm -hmm. We are handing down the Ruderay Moore. It started with Ruderay Moore, the GOAT Award. That award went from Ruderay Moore to Red Fox. It went mm -hmm. from Red Fox to Richard Pryor. I got pictures of Richard Pryor receiving the GOAT Award, the Red Fox GOAT Award. I got pictures of him receiving mm -hmm. that award from me on stage. Mm -hmm. It's on the net. Now we are going to hand that go to war down to four guys, one of four guys, one of four. And these awards, this award goes to people who have changed the face of comedy to a certain degree. Mm. The first person that we'd like to honor to give it to is handed it to Dave Chappelle. Mm. The second person that we'd like to give it to, if Dave doesn't want to accept it, is uh, Martin Lawrence. The third person we'd like to give it to, if Martin don't want to accept it, is Chris Rock. And the fourth person that we'd like to give it to you all around, outstanding actor, comedian, singer, you name it, is Jamie Foxx. Mm. Now, these people will be given their letters of invitation, letting them know that we want to pass this, this go to water on to keep that legacy going. We don't know who's going to accept. Mm. But that's where we are. Now, if we were white and we said we want to give you a gold award, guess what? My phone We'd pay you to do it, right? Isn't that how it works? But it shouldn't work that way. Mm. It should not be that way. So yeah. we planning on doing that, and we're going to do a retrospect. We're looking at James Amos of Good Times. Mm. Yeah. This man has never really Everybody's received bad. a major award. Has been in the business for over 50 years, and we definitely want to honor her and a person that was done wrong on her show, her last show that she did, and that lady's name is Joe Marie Payton France. Hmm. Um, oh. Family Matters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was okay. like, hey. yeah. Joe Marie has been in the business for over 50 years. She started with Tom Hanks. That was her first major TV show. She played a maid on the show that he was playing on where he dressed up as a girl and his mm. roommate get dressed up as a girl and they were dressed that way to get a cheaper price on rent. I don't <laughs> forgot the name of the show. I wish I could, but anyway, Joe started out. She did some other stuff before then, but this was a major breakthrough for her on that show. Joe Marie on Family Matters, there was a young girl that played the daughter and this that uh, sitcom, this child went upstairs and she never came back downstairs. Right. Joe Marie has been an advocate for putting an end to that. And that young lady, I don't know her name, I've forgotten her name, but we want to honor her, okay? Mm. We've got Locke Voorhees that we want to honor. Yeah. One of the very few first black child actors on a major TV show back in the day, her and Kim Fields. Right. So these are people who have opened doors for all these actors and actresses who are just enjoying life as though they did it themselves. No, somebody came before you. Mm -hmm. And this is what we're going to do for 2024. And then we're going to honor some of the future comedians, like some of the ones that made their marks on the Internet, your Internet comedians, right. your stage comedians. All and right. there, I mean, I'm glad you're doing that because they're there was a time that they weren't getting the respect they deserved for the TikTok comedians and so on, because they're like, oh, they didn't, they haven't earned their respect by working the clubs, but going viral is hard, <laughs> you know, <laughs> getting people right. to enjoy your content and share it. It's hard. So yeah. I do think I do, I do give them credit for that. Cause I mean, that's how some of the comedians I've been introduced of the newer kind was first mm -hmm. on TikTok. Then I started looking for their actual um, longer 
series is on air and loved it just Absolutely. as much. So, but yeah, I mean, he, well, not TikTok because I can't, t- I can't do TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> too much of a time suck because I'm like, what am I even watching <laughs> after a couple of hours? But Instagram, I can do a lot quicker and be like, okay, saw my friends, I'm good, I've caught up and move on, you know. But with Instagram, you Absolutely. end up doom scrolling, as they call it. But um, I will tell you something, like, yeah, mm-hmm. to show you how how diverse our organization is. Yeah, the first Asian comedian that made a splash. She was the first female Asian comedian because there was another Asian comedian. A, pe- a lot of people don't even know this, but the first black, the first black, I'm not going to say white, but the first black other minority comedian team duel that was traveling around America mm. doing stand up together was a man named Pat Marino from the Karate Kid. And the guy that played on WKRP in Cincinnati, <gasps> Venus. What's his name? I'm thinking Tim Reed, but I know that's not Tim it. Reed, that's it. <laughs> that is Tim that's Reed. It. <laughs> My sister. That's it. Okay. I was like, wait, people don't know this. <laughs> and then but you're these two men, like, wait. Yeah, sorry. These two men used to travel together doing stand up together. <sighs> now, what we did, we didn't get a chance to honor Pat Marino, but we definitely want to honor. Tim and Daphne Reed 2024 because they are the first married duo couple that has been successful producing TV shows. Mm -hmm. Now, back to the Asian. There was a lady named Margaret Cho. Have you ever heard of her? Of course I have. Margaret Cho. Yeah. Margaret Cho. All the tattoos on her arms. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, Margaret Cho asked me, could she be part of the tribute that we were doing for Red Fox and Della Reese? I love Della Reese. Okay, we honor Della Reese. Yeah. Yes, I went to Della Reese's house to give her her AHA trophy. Okay. Um, oh, All yeah. right. Now, Margaret show was new, and she wanted to be a part of what we were doing, and that was paying tribute to Red Fox and Della Reese. Margaret said, please, Mr. Cooper, will you give me three minutes? I'm funny. She had some friends with her. And I said, no, Margaret, you know, a black audience ain't like a white audience. You got to bring it in order to make these people laugh. Because if you don't, they'll take that mic from you. She's like, I'm telling you now, I'm funny. And I said, okay, Margaret, if you really think you can do it, I'm going to give you three minutes. But I'm going to tell you now, if you start to die, you might come off the stage quicker than three minutes. So she said, okay. Margaret goes on stage at the Wilshire Ebell Theater off of Wilshire Boulevard in LA. Her name is on the bill. I got her name. I still got that flyer. Okay. (laughs) Margaret went on to do three minutes and Margaret wind up doing 20 minutes and killed, brought the house down. I love it. And when she came off stage, I said, Margaret, I'm going to tell you now, you got the makings of a star. You need Mm -hmm. to pursue this. And look at what happened. She took off. We want to honor Margaret again, because we didn't honor her then. We just gave her an opportunity to perform. But Margaret has made her mark. And we want to honor her in 2024. Another legend Mm -hmm. in a minority community. And this is what the ahas are about. Yeah. I love it. Just bringing the community together. Because I do believe like making it seem like white film is mainstream and then everything else is black or Asian or Hispanic. Absolutely. You're bringing it all together is making Absolutely. it just even more prominent to party all together. Cause we know uh, the more the merrier. <laughs> it's like we need everybody's spices involved. You right. see this sign behind me? Uh, I got it some glare says, on it. I see the red and green. Yes. It says, oh, hold on. It says the ahas and up in the corner, it say laughter has no color. So smile. Mm-hmm. That's our slogan for the ahas. Now, the colors represent major things that all of us as human beings share. The red represent the blood that runs through all of our veins. It's essential. Can't live without it. Really? The, the gold represents all the natural minerals that comes from the earth, like gold, oil, 
diamonds, rubies, pearls. The green represents all the trees that produces the oxygen for us to live. Those colors represents life. And the blackness represents the beginning of life itself because all things come from darkness into what? Into light. Well, I want to make sure that everybody knows to check out Sir Cooper, um, thank you so much for being my guest today. And please tell everyone where they can keep up with the ahas, how they can support the ahas, where they can go to get their ticket for the ahas. And if you've already hired the moderator or MC for the ahas, because <clears throat> well, I know a person that might know a person that would love to be involved. <laughs> well, we, not I know like somebody fun. that I would love <laughs> to have as many people involved as possible. They can go to <laughs> it's the ahas.com. And all those clips I was telling you about, about Steve Harvey getting his first award, all that stuff is on there. Dick Gregory, <laughs> that stuff is on there. Rudy Ray Moore. Oh, I got to tell you one other thing. Okay. Rudy Ray Moore gave me the movie that Eddie Murphy did about Rudy Ray Moore. Dolomite is my name. Yeah. It was about the makings of that album. Yeah. And Netflix didn't know that that album had gone gold. Rudy Ray Moore gave me that gold album. And this is the gold album right here. He gave that album to me. Oh, let me make me. that a big screen. Wait, let me pull it back up. I want to make that big screen so everybody can see that. All right. Okay. And the original album cover. That is, that is what that movie was made off of. Wow. It was about the makings of that very album, and they didn't even know that it had gone gold. And see, he and gave it to me. About. Yeah. He gave it to me as as a token of his and all the other legendary comedians because they threw a dinner in my honor. And at that dinner, he presented that album to me, thanking me for what I had done for creating this. And that's why Girl, this that's is a lot so of important. History. Yeah, we got to keep sharing these stories because not everything's in a history book and the way that Florida and some other states <clears throat> are going, they're not going to be in any book. So we need to have another way of making sure that our history is still out there. And, you know, back Absolutely. in the day, it was grandma's telling us it was at church Absolutely. we were learning. And now it's going to be on YouTube and Instagram or wherever we need to be to get our information. And I'm so grateful that you are sharing this with us today. So more of us can be aware of the AHA Awards because I admit I hadn't heard of it either and i used to live in l i used to go to chocolate tuesdays and fat tuesday so i'm like wait nobody told me about the ahas but um now i know now i'm in the know and i'm gonna make sure other people know as well about the ahas because this is this sounds like a fun time and i'm ready to go and it's going to be yeah. october 8th in two, 2024 in las vegas october right? 6th october 2024 okay in las vegas and they can go to it's the ahas our website and just keep up with us and uh, and we can take it from there. And and tickets will go on sale more than likely, probably sometime in April of next year, because okay. we're still pulling it together right now. We still don't have a sponsor. I'm looking for sponsors, so people, hey, help a brother out. Uh, mm -hmm. We will be doing it for over 30 years now. And I want to thank you and eSpot, eSpot. I like that eSpot. I, mean, I want to thank you eSpot. Entertainment for Spot. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, I really want to thank you for having me on. I want to thank uh, 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 Stella's PR organization for pulling this together for us and help us get the word out. I know that we are a year in advance and getting the word out, but you know, if we don't get a head start on trying to save our legacy and our history, I'm gonna tell you now, we'll look around and just like they overturned Roe versus Way. Mm -hmm. We will not have anybody talking about our, our our past or our future at all. Right. That's right. Well, what is it they were saying? Like, if you don't write your own future, it's like having um, the prey is now writing the um, the story for, for the pre or the prey, the predator, something like that. Like, I always mess up because I'm dyslexic. I mess up these things, too, where it's like um, if you don't write your own stories, then the people who are hunting you will write the stories for That's you. Right. From their perspective. They will write it the way they want it. Exactly. They will so, write it the way they want it. Mm -hmm. And with us, our slogan is, if you don't know your history and you allow someone else to tell your history, yeah. trust me, the truth will never be found. That's right. And that's what we uh, that's what we live by. So yeah. I want to thank you so much for having me on. It's been a lot of fun.
Same. I really appreciate it. And thanks everyone for tuning in. Make sure you follow Sir Cooper and you keep up with the AHA Awards and make sure you let your friends know and a couple of your family too about the eSpot with Camille and keep sharing our information. And you can always find this episode as long as with all of our other episodes at CamilleCoward.com. Again, that's CamilleCoward.com. And I look forward to seeing you again next week. We'll have another episode of the eSpot with Camille. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful Yeah, you did. And she love me when I'm in it. And she never be pretending. Nothing is friend. She gon' tell you what she bought it.